Hello everyone and welcome to my studio. I am continuing on the series where I'm showing you how to make bridal bouquets from paper flowers. So today we're going to make a brand new bridal bouquet and we're using some of the kits that we have in our shop. We also have all of these in cut files so if you don't have the kits you can make them along with this as well. But today I'm using the anemone flower. I'm using some of the succulent plants. I'm, I'll point out exactly which ones I'm using. I'm using a few of the ferns and eucalyptus branches and then I'm also using just a few of the air plants and this is going to create a beautiful unusual bridal bouquet that has a color theme of more black and white with a little bit of that blue sagey green. So going over all of the parts and pieces that I'm going to use for this bouquet we have all of our anemone flowers and these are black and white. I also have the extra leaves that came in the pack and these are glued back to back on wire stems and they're ready to go. So that's kind of the focal point of my bouquet are these black and white flowers. Then I went in and I pulled out every single succulent that we have in the pack that has a bit more of this blue green tone and they had little short wires so I went ahead and taped on a longer wire so that these are ready to go into the bouquet. So I have, I'll count them out for you, I have three of this style, I have three of this style, and then I also pulled out these that look a little bit more flower like and these three I had to make a stem on them. So when we initially made these in the video, you can go back and watch the video on how to make all of these. So in the video, I showed how to make a pin. So all I did was I took the pin and I squished it together and then taped a new stem on the back. So I have three of those. I just found another one of these. So <laughs> let's go back to this one. We have four of these. So three, four, and three. And that's what I pulled out of the succulent pack. And then for the air plants, I went ahead and pulled out the three smallest air plants that have a mixture of colors and I just added a wire into, I kind of wrapped it around the back and then came out the front and glued it into place. So we have those on wires and then I picked out three of the larger succulents that have more of that teal tone. There's one that's a bit more blue and two that are a little bit more green. And again, I just added the stem onto the back so that I can put that right into my bouquet. The trick on doing this, I actually tucked some of the stem right behind some of the petals or leaves on these succulents. But the trick is, if you are going to add a wire stem, it works best if you do have the paper covered wire. And then just make sure you are gluing your stem between paper. So right here you can see I just added a little swatch of paper that I cut out from the extra pieces in these little packs. So that way it's secure and it's ready to go into the bouquet. So these are all of the, this is, it's a greenery, but it's also almost like a flower, adding a flower into the bouquet. So this will be my secondary visual point along with the white anemones. The last part of greenery that I'm adding into the bouquet comes from the ferns and eucalyptus pack. And you'll notice that there are different colors in this pack. We have greens that are, you know, true greens. Some are, have a little more yellow in them. And then we have this blue and teal. And that's what I pulled out. This one is, you know, almost like an aqua color. And the ones that I really wanted in this bouquet, because I'm looking at all the parts and pieces together, I wanted some large leaves because I felt like I needed some filler to maybe, you know, the, everything's really tiny and delicate, so I wanted something a little more punchy that will kind of give it a base in the back of the bouquet. And all I did was I shaped and formed a small and a large leaf, and then I glued them together between a wire and added a little bit of tape so that that is ready. And when we put it into the bouquet, we'll probably bend it and move it around a bit, but this is ready to go. So I have one, two, three, four of these, and then I had a couple extra smaller leaves, so I have five. And then I also put together just three of these smaller, the, I didn't use the gigantic size leaf, but the smaller leaves in the darker, almost blue, gray blue color. Then I wanted to add these little delicate ferns because again, I just thought that that delicate, almost round shape really emulated some of the shapes in the flower and it, it really enhanced that. So right here, 
I went ahead and, and glued a short and a long together and my wire is glued almost halfway up the long so that I can give some shape. I added a little bit of curl to each of those and we have four of these in this really blue gray tone and then I have four more that are in more of that ocean uh, teal tone. So that is what I'm going to make the bouquet with. So here I've laid out some tools and a little bit of material and we'll just go over all of those. I do have my hot glue gun here and most of the hot glue gun was used in prepping everything like gluing the leaves onto the wire. So once all of this is done, we probably don't need our hot glue gun again, just in case something falls off a wire, you might wanna keep it on hand. I also have my scissors. All of this is pre-done. I probably won't need them except to cut the ribbon, but I do have them on hand. And then the curling tool, same thing. Just have it there just in case, but most of these, this is used ahead of time. So for this particular bouquet, what I need to assemble everything, I have some heavy duty wire cutters because this will cut right through the thicker wires. I have my floral tape, that's important. You'll wanna bind your stems together as you go, and this will help secure that. And then I'm going to finish the bouquet by wrapping the stem in this ribbon. And I picked this, two-sided, it's kind of a grow grain ribbon and it has a black and white stripe to it. I thought that really enhanced the black and white of the flowers and it adds, I think it has a little bit of a French tone to it, this crisp black and white. So I picked that ribbon to go with this bouquet. So there's what you need. You have all your flowers ready to go. I'm gonna show you how I assemble this into a bridal bouquet. Quite a few years ago, I had a flower shop and I would make bridal bouquets from fresh flowers. And the way that I would assemble these would start with the greenery first and then add the flowers because you wanted to form your base. But I'm finding that when I do my paper flower bouquets, I actually do it a bit opposite. So I would say, try it for you. Start with your greens first or start with your flowers. Just see what feels the most comfortable. But I think that what I would suggest, no matter you know how you're doing your bouquet, is begin kind of with the idea of what is your focal point. And right now my focal point is going to be the white anemone and then my secondary focal point will be some of these succulents. But what I'm also finding in this particular arrangement are these air plants are so big that I can actually add those in fairly quickly even though they're not a focal point, but they're big and they'll fill space so I'll probably start dropping those in, maybe even second to this. But one of the things I wanna say is I just love how these paper kits, they just mix and match so well, and that was kind of our idea when we designed them that you could take parts and pieces from each one and make all these unique arrangements, and this is what we're doing today. So it's so exciting. I don't even know what's gonna come out. We're, we're experimenting together on this video. So what I'm gonna do is stand up, and we're gonna do an overhead as you watch me assemble this bouquet. So I'll start by putting pulling a few of these anemone flowers. And I'm gonna bend their heads towards me just a bit. These have been used a few times, which again, I love that about paper flowers is you can recycle and reuse them over and over. I don't want their heads to be tight together, so I'm gonna start adding in some of my other pieces. And like I said, the great thing about these air plants is they make a, a filler very, very quickly because they're pretty bulky. I'm gonna add some other color in here. And one of the things that I try to remember when I'm making a bouquet is to give a lot of dimension. You don't want everything on one plane. You wanna have some things deeper and some things you know, closer. And you can uh, play with that and arrange that as you go. So this would be my secondary flower. So I really do wanna give that a nice prominent view. And then I'll add another one of these succulents down here, but this is too similar of a color. So I wanna put something between that. I'll just make that succulent fairly deep. Things slide around a lot when you're arranging the paper flowers, so you know don't worry about it. It's it, you can arrange it as you go. Um, they will slide around. You're holding it as best you can. I think I need some more of these. Maybe another one here. It's almost like don't pause too much in the beginning. Just get some flowers in your hand and start watching it form. Oftentimes, I do like to cluster a few things together that pulls your eye when you cluster more than one thing. So I have two of these down here. I'm gonna add two more up here. Okay, so right now, since I'm feeling like things are falling, I'll go ahead and start adding some of these really big leaves. Now I might 
tip them down so they don't show quite as much, but what it's doing is it's giving me a bit of a surface so that my bouquet stays forward. I don't necessarily like these points. We'll rearrange them in a bit. I'm liking this flow. Here we'll see how it turns out, but that's where it's at in the moment. We have this here. I think I'll pull this out. Remember we're saying, you know, make sure everything's not on the same plane. So this is where you can start pulling things out of it. This one keeps wanting to fall. So again, I need something big back there. Maybe I'll, I'll put this air plant here just to give it some structure. Again, I'm clustering two over here and I'll cluster another one in this section. Now this, this succulent fell through, so I'm gonna pull it back up because I do wanna see that succulent. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm just putting these leaves in the back to add the structure. And these I want to kind of fall forward just a bit. I'm going to add some of this sort of fern in here as well. So I want the bouquet to have a bit of a fall to it. Right now I'm, fi I'm feeling like it's narrow. I need to build it out a bit on the side. We can do that here in a second. And then I want some more of this texture up here to balance it out. And I want a blue one to mix in there. Okay, this is looking good. I'm liking this. Now I'm gonna build it out towards the, this direction a bit. So you can see my bouquet, it's looking a little bit narrow and I'm gonna build it out to the sides a bit. I still have some more of these secondary flowers I wanna add in and I wanna make for sure that they really show. So once I kind of have it a bit arranged, then I'll go back and make sure that these are placed right where I want them. So you can see I've placed the three succulents right here. It's almost in a triangle. I wanna make sure they're spaced out. They are the secondary visual. And then these two together, clustered together, makes a really nice triangle with this one right here as well. So I'm liking this. I think we'll just start adding the final greenery. I still have these little guys and I'm not sure how I want to use them. So maybe just tuck them in the back here. I have a few more of these ferns, so I wanna use these in a place that seems the most balanced. So we have our ferns here, ferns here. So I would say I'll put some right over here. In fact, I'm just gonna cluster them just like this. And I just love the way they spill out to the side. And then I'll put the last succulent on this side. So we have a succulent, the small one up here at the top, another one over here. That's, that's a nice balance. And now the only thing I have left are a few more of these leaves. I might use those on the back because I feel pretty full here. I just wanna make for sure, I'm gonna go back in and just make for sure that the heads are turned the way I want them of the flowers. This one seemed a little short. Let's see if I can get that into my hand. There we go. All right, I do like that. Maybe um, I'm gonna put one right here, one leaf here. And I think what I'll do now is I'm gonna tape it off and then I can rearrange a few things because if I turn it over, I might lose some of my pieces. So I'm taking a bit of this tape, holding on pretty tight. I wanna start up at the top. Some of the stems are shorter than, well, they're all about the same length, but since some are higher up, I need to make sure I capture all of the stems. So very carefully, I'm going to tape this up. And I'm, I'm hanging on to this as, as much as I can as I turn it and I see a few things moving, which is fine. We'll just put them back into place. You can see as I'm arranging it, I have it somewhat flatter here and then on the back, this is where it would hold against the dress. Something like this, I might even turn the face down a bit. All right, before I get into that too much, let's go ahead and finish taping. So I have all these stems that are different sizes, but before I cut all of those off, I wanna do a bit more secure taping on this. And I haven't finished putting all the leaves in yet, but I will do that once I know exactly where I want to put them. Now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and start trimming some of these. And I want to trim them all pretty even about to here. So I'll go ahead and do this one at a time. You might wanna put safety glasses on because these things kind of fly. <laughs> 
And I do have, these are, these are very thick stems. So I'm doing one at a time. Okay, I have all the stems pretty much cut the same size. But before I finish wrapping that, I do want to add the final pieces and I'm going to make for sure everything is in place exactly the way I want it. So this is where I get to do my final rearranging. I don't want the leaves to stick upward. I, it looks a little awkward to me, so I'm actually gonna turn the heads a bit so that they come down. I'll do the same here. I wanna make sure that these, these little ferns show. Okay, this is, I'm liking this. I love the way this is going. I don't even think I'll touch that. I wanna pull this one out just a bit more. Not too much, you don't wanna pull it too far because it will pop out before you get it completely taped down. Yeah, I really like that. Okay, just bend a few of these so it has a natural flow. I even like how the succulent's hanging a bit more. There we go. Now I'm gonna turn it over and I see a few things that I wanna cover up and that's where I would use the last pieces of leaves. So just kinda of tuck those in. I wanna tuck a few back here and I'm just sliding through and then joining this bundle that I have. So I'm gonna put all three of them right here. I have a bit of a hole here that I want to cover. Just tuck those in. I can feel the wires coming onto my hand. And I will go ahead and do a final tape. You know, at this point, if you do see that you need more succulents, I have a few more sitting here. I'm not gonna use them, but just as an example. If you feel like you need more tucked in, which uh, now that I say that, maybe I'll do that. Cause that could fill that out really nicely. I have two more. And rather than putting stems on them, I'm actually just gonna glue them right in. So let's do that after we finish this. You know, and using floral tape, I always tell people, be a little patient. It's tricky, it's not super sticky, but you warm it up with your fingers and by stretching it, and then it becomes very sticky. It becomes sticky on your fingers. Uh, as long as it um, attaches to itself, you're doing a great job. You don't want it to fall off, so you do wanna give it a bit of a stretch when you're wrapping and I'm going all the way to the bottom and then I will actually try to cover up the bottom a bit because we don't want any of those wires hurting you know, someone's fingers. So I'm going even further down and then I'll bunch it and tack it back up. And then to finish that end, I'll take a piece of floral tape and go vertical on the stems like this and then I'll wrap that up. The trick with floral tape is floral tape sticks to itself. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this back around and this is a little impromptu. <laughs> I wasn't planning on doing this, but I think it's a great idea. I still have my hot glue gun heated up here and I wanna give a, a substantial amount of hot glue onto the back of this and I'll show you exactly what I'm thinking here. So you can, you can see, if you look over here, there's a bit of a hole. And I just don't wanna look at that, so I'm gonna glue that right onto that big fat leaf and just make that space full. And I'm gonna do the same thing right back here as well. Substantial amount of glue. And it's, this is the, the hot, hot, hot glue. It's not the low temp glue. And making sure that it actually sticks paper onto paper. That works the best. And that gives a really, really nice finish to the back of your bouquet. If it's sitting on the table, you know, in a vase during the, you know, the reception ceremony, then it looks beautiful from all sides. And that just fell off. So that means I need to be a little more careful. I can, I can slide my fingers right in there and I can feel paper goes to paper. You have to be careful, it's hot, but there, there we go. I finally got it. And if you're nervous about the paper, go ahead and just add an extra wire into it. You can also, you know, take a smaller wire and loop it through and wire it to your bouquet if you feel uncomfortable that it might fall out. Florists actually do use succulents and air plants in bridal bouquets all the time. And that's what we're doing here. You, you know, we can add the stems right onto the paper, but when you add them as a fresh flower bouquet into the fresh flower bouquet, you actually do have to wire them in and hold them into place. So we're doing kind of a combination of the two. So here's the final bouquet. The last thing we need to do is add the ribbon onto the stem. So I'll show you how to do that. So it's easiest access to see the stem or the handle of the bouquet from the back side. So I'm gonna turn that over, very gently lay that on my table. 
then I'm going to use, I would say, let's start with about a yard of ribbon. I hope that will work. And I'm going to go ahead and cut it. We'll probably cut it again once we have it tied. Cut it with my scissors. And then I'll take about four inches at the top and I'll hold it right at the top of that handle and then I'll start wrapping my ribbon down the handle at an angle. And I want to keep that flat and straight. I think I actually have plenty of ribbon, maybe too much. I'll go almost to the bottom. It's okay if there's a little green peeking through because none of the wires are all covered and then I'll go back up at an angle. This gives a really nice soft handle for the bride or the bridesmaid. And then once we have reached the top, at this point I, I prefer a really simple square knot rather than a bow, but you can also tie a bow if you'd like. And so I'm going to do, to slide that through to create a knot, you might want to have somebody helping you and hold the bouquet while you're doing this so you can use both hands. I've had a little bit of practice. And then the way that you get this to be a square knot is you'll notice that there's one ribbon that's pointing upward and one pointing down. So loop the, the one that's pointing down and then overlap. You wanna go over the top. The top is over the top. And then when you pull that through, you'll see how that top ribbon still stays over the top and that's how you make it a square knot and so it's not crooked. Then at this point, you can go ahead and cut these as short as you want to. I think this is a bit long for me, so I will fold it in half and then cut. This is the edge and this is the center of the fold. Cut from edge into the center and then you get these pretty little points. I'll do the same on this side. Edge to center, cutting down, a pretty point. And there's the back. So here we are with a beautiful finished bouquet made from paper flowers. We have our black and white anemone, which reminds me of a wedding because it kind of has that tuxedo feel. Then we have our succulents, we have some air plants, and then some little delicate ferns to finish it out. And I think this is just stunning. Make sure and check out some of the other videos in the series where we teach you how to use our paper kits and make these beautiful arrangements. And we have all the links below for everything that you'll need, whether it be materials, tools, the kits, even if you wanna make this on your own without the kit, we have all of that as well. When you make your beautiful paper flower bouquets, make sure and hashtag Made with Leah because we love to see what you do. And this gives us an opportunity to take a peek at what you're doing as well. Stay tuned because we have more bouquets coming and we'll see you next time. Not sure where to start your crafting adventure? Pop on over to leahgriffith.com and we will help you jump in.